Marco Polo was born in 1254 in Venice, Italy. His father was a rich merchant that was most of the time away. Marco's father was not here when Marco was born because in 1253, Marco's father and his uncle went trading. Marco's mother died when he was at a young age. He was sent to his aunt and uncle. Marco learned to read, write, and work with numbers, mostly from merchants. Marco Polo, at the age of 17, started his travels with his uncle and father. In the ending of the year of 1271, when the Polos had received letters and valuable gifts for the great Khan from the Pope Tertado, they decided once more to set out from Venice on their journey to the east. While their journey to the east, they passed through Armenia, Persia, and Afghanistan over the Premiers and all along the Silk Road to China. During their journey, they cut across the vast Gobi Desert of to Beijing. When the Polos finally arrived to Beijing and met Kublai Khan, in which greeted the Polos happily and offered them a position in the court. Marco dedicated himself to learn the Chinese culture and language in which Khan was impressed this and assigned him to do to be the special envoy. This position led Marco to travel to the far reaches of Asia, which included Tibet, Burma, and India, places Europeans have never been before. Polo had stayed in China for 17 years, gathering riches and gold. And when they decided to return to Venice, it took them two years to cross the Indian Ocean, in which many of their passengers died. And when they reached Persia, where they would leave a princess that the Khan had ordered them to do so, so she could marry a prince, she, the, promise, the promised prince was dead too. So they had to linger Persia until finding a suitable prince for the princess. And eventually the Polos returned to Venice after being gone for 24 years. The Polos were unrecognizable and they struggled to speak Italian. When Marco joined his father and uncle in their travels, they were in the middle of completing a charge for Kublai Khan. Marco and company were supposed to bring back 100 Christian priests, but could only enlist two. And even then, the journey proved too much for the priests, and they quit. Kublai Khan was so impressed with the polos that they became his eyes to the outside world. The trio would trade their wares while traveling and gathering information for the Khan. The trade routes weren't always safe. There were thieves everywhere that preyed on traveling merchants. Marco Polo and company would often trade jewelry, which could easily be hidden. Throughout his journeys, Marco vividly recalled the people and places he saw, but there was little to no opinionated input on his part. Marco Polo met Kublai Khan, Emperor of China, who recognized Marco Polo's intelligence and offered him a job. He worked for the next 17 years, being sent on many fact-finding missions throughout China and the neighboring lands. He also served as a senior tax inspector. After returning home, he fought against Venice's rival city, Genoa, and was captured and put in prison. There he met Rusticello, a well-known writer of romantic tales. Marco Polo told him stories about his travels, and, after his release, Rusticello wrote these tales down in a book called The Travels of Marco Polo. The Marco Polo story legends, written records that vary and numerous points. This is why historians have had an even harder time deciphering fact from fiction. Many details in the much earlier accounts of his travels coincide with fact and what should be expected from a story of a merchant traveling to China. Items like paper money are mentioned, which help historians find credibility in the story. But some important details aren't mentioned, such as tea and foot binding, which were highly expected to be mentioned to give more credibility to the story. However, other items are mentioned which further destroy the credibility of Marco Polo's travels, such as spaghetti and ice cream. Some verifiable facts keep his story from just being a story. Wills to Marco Polo in Venice were found to testify his existence. It is said that he was once governor in China during his travels, but no records have been found to deem this true. Marco was released from prison at the age of 45. Marco spent the rest of his life running as a successful merchant businessman. He used to talk about his adventures a lot that the people of Venice, Italy got tired of. On January 8, 1324, a priest was sent to Marco so he could say his final will. The priest asked Marco if he would like to confess that the stories were not true. 
Marco replied, "I did not tell half of what I saw." He later died at home in 1324 at the age of 70.